is up everyone welcome back to another episode of rebel informer we're going to hop in and talk about galactic challenges today uh, but if this is your first time on the channel or have been watching for a while please consider hitting that sub button down below for some more videos in the future what is up raid welcome back to the channel hey how's it going so uh we've done a bit of improvement so everything looks a little different than it did last go around hopefully we've got audio and everything working well for you guys uh so um Hopping in, though, what are your first impressions on Galactic Challenges? Did they kind of hit what you were looking for? Definitely not. Definitely, <laughs> Definitely not. not. Um, that seems to be kind of the... We said a bit last time. It seems kind of be the, uh, the main thing going on in the community. And I, I, I just... I, I was expecting a lot more for something that they had so much time into doing. Now, I am glad that they've kind of addressed some of those issues. So, uh, was, were there some things that you liked about it? Is there anything that kind of stood out to you that you just didn't really like? Like, what, what are your thoughts there? I don't really know. I mean, it's kind of like I, I was quite disappointed when it came out because it was obviously completely different to what I wanted. Because obviously I wanted like the sandbox, you know, fight your guild mates or just do just play the game. Yeah which I think everybody kind of wants. But um, even with them sort of saying, hey, you know, you're going to be able to use your whole roster, you're going to be able to do this. Um, and we kind of talked about this before, but it's kind of like, um, it, even if it was something like the the Galactic War, where you're going through a series of things and you've only got like one refresher's worth of your roster to do it, mm -hmm. having stuff like that, seemed like it would be really cool. They were like, you're going to be able to use every roster. It's going to challenge players of all levels. And I'm like, it, it doesn't. It doesn't hit any of the points that they said it was going to do. It's just another battle. Yeah, that was my... And it's not even a fun one. It's kind of just dull. Yeah, that was my downfall on it as well. Like, I was expecting them to have something that was more of... Like, I was thinking of... Um, DSA has this tower challenge mode, which is... Um, it's one of those things where you go as far up this challenge... Or up this tower as you can. There's a bunch of different teams that you fight. Uh, you kind of wear out your roster throughout that process and at least it's allowing you every time you do that to use all your characters and that kind of thing and there's points uh within those fights where you have teams that work well against this sort of setup so it allows you to kind of uh use your different teams in beneficial areas so i was kind of thinking it was going to be a little bit more like that when they were first describing this and instead yeah, of just being the same that sounds all right you know what i mean like it has the same battle but it's just different tiers and i didn't really find that battle to be overly difficult I don't, I don't know, like, I mean, if you took your best team in, I was still able to beat everything. It just wasn't able to hit their um, their settings for the feats. And I thought that they really kind of missed the boat there when they were saying it was going to be, you know, challenging and uh, kind of, of a puzzle to figure out. And, like, when your feet is have five of a certain faction or undersize, like... To me, they're they're way more creative when they're doing a lot of their stuff than they than what they showed with this because you know what some of their strong points I think is making kits for characters and uh, designing some of the battles that kind of go around uh, some of the events and stuff that they do like I just I was surprised that they didn't hit the marks with uh, the modifiers and stuff to kind of make it a fun entertaining battle um, and I was just expecting more battles like not the same team all the way through it kind of threw me off a little bit. Yeah, um, I, don't, I, I definitely don't think the one team thing is a good move. I mean, if it's something you're meant to be able to play as much as you want, it needs to have a, a level of randomness in it where you don't just go, oh, I can't beat that team, done. Yeah, and um, you know, also their, their big focus is on factions. And, uh, you know, like the first one was Separatist. Well, there's a lot of different Separatist yep. lineups that you can make there. So... I think they just missed out on an opportunity to uh, have that randomness in there of facing different separatist oh, yeah. lineups and learning how to work through those. Because it, it can be a really good learning tool for newer players coming in if they're seeing these teams maybe for the first time here instead of fighting them for the first time in GAC or something like that. Yeah, so. that definitely would be more fun if you got like a random separatist team or it had so many pre-built teams and it kind of like cycled through mm -hmm. them. Now, one thing that they did do, and I was glad that they did, was they did reach out and kind of address some of the issues. And uh, it is nice that they've said this is a beta mode. So um, hopefully they're kind of learning some stuff from this and will make some changes to address it. I know one of the big outcries was with um, 
the uh, gearing or the gear that was available rewards were kind of lackluster. I did like some of the stuff about the rewards, and I think it is an opportunity for them to help new players catch up with um, adding in the character shards as part of it. I think that they should probably do that, not make it part of having you know gear level requirements like they did. But uh, you think of new players coming to this game, this could be a good opportunity to give them the characters that they may need for uh, somebody like. Uh, CLS or JKR, some of these like older meta teams that are still really useful that people are going for early, like accelerate that process, and you're going to keep players in the game at that point when they're able to go ahead and get these fun yeah. teams instead of you know grinding out six months of, of working with the Phoenix team, which is pretty miserable. I, I do like having character shards as rewards because even if you've got those shards, you obviously get the um, you get the shard currency, so you can you can buy the gear twelve plus gear. Mm -hmm. Or whatever you want so I, I don't mind having character shards especially if they're characters where you might not necessarily want to go out of your way to farm them mm -hmm. like some of the slightly more obscure ones the other thing is they could just put some of the existing store currencies in there yeah because uh, it's not like you can't just like you say buy shards of characters you've already got if you've got them all it doesn't it doesn't hamper you in any way yeah and, and speaking of currencies they did in the data mine have the new uh picture for a new currency in there so i'm hoping that that's something that oh, they yeah. add in that gives them the opportunity, one, to throw in those old character shards that people need for newer players, and then also gives them the opportunity to maybe have some new farmable characters coming into the game to come specifically from that yeah, store you could have and gear. Ones. So, what were you saying? Yeah, you have some exclusive characters just to that format. I, I don't think they will, though, because it's because if they're doing this and it's meant to be the sort of daily play thing, it's why would they put them on there when they can just stick them on a node like any other character mm -hmm. well it may just be a new way for them to introduce characters to us um I, like I, I like kind of like the exclusive characters in the shop i think that that makes it makes that shop feel like it's got a little bit more worth to it uh, but then also put in some desirable gear in there and it allows the character or the player to have some choice in what the reward is from doing this event i think will you know be more favorable to the community in, in that way. So uh, they did, um, I've got it up on the screen, you can't see it right now, but I did um, pull up the uh, um, response back to this because they did address some of the feed feedback. So uh, uh, CG uh, Crumb came on and uh, addressed some of that stuff. So one of the things was kind of in the initial readout of this, they're talking about uh, you know uh, being able to change the the things with the new tools that they got as far as like factions and modifiers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but they did talk about the rewards um, and we're looking specifically for the lower tier rewards, which um, I thought were, I thought the lower tier were actually kind of okay for the most part. Um, maybe, maybe needing some better gear stuff, but I thought the character shards were pretty nice. Um, but what really stood out to me was when they were talking about the feet stuff, um, so they were closely re-examining the ratio uh, gear feats were intended to reward players to build up their roster and provide value over time, but the content format feels at odds with more specific nature of the of these uh, feats. So I I think hopefully they're noticing that that gear like having having gear crunches on specific factions is not a fun way to address rewards in this thing. Like I think oh, that's definitely. terrible. That was um, that was probably my biggest I complaint had it, like overall. Like we just like the bounty hunter one that's on now. I'm like, cool. I've got some really good bounty hunters, but I don't have um, a full like bounty hunter thing where they're all there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like my Dengar's like gear nine, so he's just holding everybody back. It's like there's, I'm not gonna just you know find a bunch of Carbontes to put that character up to gear ten to do the next one level to get an extra thing it's just yeah it's just not how people play it's this not game. worth it right now and, and like we said it's an expedition thing so hopefully they've got some changes going around so speaking of changes though what are some things specifically that you noticed that you would like to see changed as part of this to make it better what wouldn't i like to see changed I mean, really <laughs> I, I i i really don't like it as a uh, as an event i just find it that it's a bit it's a bit dull. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely feel like, as we said, you need to have different teams in there. You can't just have the same teams over and over. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't add enough to the game. It doesn't make you want to replay it. Uh, I also feel that they don't. They need to sort of take away the whole um, like the gearing thing. Um, 
but also the, like the things that they said they were going to do sound interesting if they can make them work yeah. so like the i mean at the moment they were on about this puzzle thing but so the puzzle thing has been do you have this character because if you've got this character you can beat it and if you don't you're going to struggle and it's like that's not a puzzle yeah, no, no i completely agree that's just a that's just a do you have x so the sith one was like do you have Treyer at a high gear level with his yeah yeah to be able to clear all of the stuff you, to get if, it down to yeah mm -hmm. if, if you've got that you're gonna do well if you don't have that you ain't gonna get anything i mean i i think i i can't remember where i got up to but i was on like uh tier five or something and it's like all gear 12 mm -hmm. and I, all of my sith i put in were all gear 12 and three and half of them just got one shot it's like that's what you recommended but they cannot beat yeah. that yeah I, I ended up using my padme squad because i only had only had four sith who were relic so without having yeah. a fifth i couldn't get any of those rewards so i just went with padme because i had two cleanses there and was able to you know outlast them with all the healing and stuff that you can do on that team as well so kind of yeah i, I did the same i've used her, her to be it padme probably one of those characters that will because of the healing and everything she's got Mm -hmm. um i mean i used it to beat the current one as well but i don't know it it feels like they're they they're made they're specifically tailoring it for that top thing where that that top feat where it's like play this faction yeah. and get the decent rewards that's that's on that um and, and one thing uh, all right so here's here's my list of things that i would like to see so one rewards changed uh just change that structure in general change the feats out to where they're actually you know challenging and fun like you know like lad, land a certain amount of debuffs um but the team that you're fighting has a shield on that that won't allow debuffs until you get to a certain point or something like that like actually bring that puzzle factor into it yeah. um i really like the idea of another currency shop i like the i, I like to be able to pick what my reward is um, so like, you know, adding another currency in there that may not be a popular view, but I kind of like it because it allows me to go after the specific things that I need and then make that currency shop. If you go that route, have good rewards in there. So we're talking stun guns, you know, golden eyeballs, all that stuff that kind of, you know, Everyone locks stun us guns. In, you know, that sort of thing. And then, um, like I, 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 my biggest complaint overall was just the gameplay was not fun and engaging. So I would rather see maybe waves or different lineups of yep. whatever faction that you're throwing in there as you're going up in different tiers so you're getting to see uh you know kind of the that faction in its glory and and that sort of thing uh so that's another thing that i would like to see is just either if you're just going to do one team uh then change it up within that faction or add um maybe waves where you're doing multiple teams uh the harder that you go up in the challenge tier or something like that um, or maybe have it, if you're going to do like an address on your full roster, maybe have it where you can swap out your teams as part of the thing. So like you go through wave one, then you can change your team to something else or something like that. Like, um, I don't know yeah. if that would or be... Or maybe you've got to use a different team for each wave sort of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah, like that. So that actually would pull in, you know, having a larger roster would be more beneficial, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's kind that of... Definitely lead what they said yeah, I, I just want something that's more playable like i was really expecting something that i could go in and test my roster about and i really have done about 10 minutes worth of play got the rewards i could get and haven't even gone back to play these afterwards oh, yeah. so um I, I think that they've got a lot Definitely of work there to make players want to come back and spend more time in this gameplay mode um and then lastly is the frequency which they said they're really going to address there so they're, they're looking at um, from the uh, post, they said two to three days. I think you could actually do this every day um, for the most part, um, or at least every two days, um, if you're going to do uh, something that you know, you're you wanting people to have constant gameplay with. I think you need to swap it up pretty often, that kind of thing. So that's my, my list. Part of that, though, is that having the sort of seven tiers or whatever they've got is if it was every day, could you be bothered? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's you know, addressed by the like, rewards. Like if you did, like if you did that with a good currency shop, where you know you know if you spent your time doing that and you're going to get a decent reward at the end of it. One, make it fun. Like nobody wants to play something that's not fun and just for a reward. Well, uh, but like you know, if you made that you know something that you can knock out in ten or fifteen minutes, but had a good reward at the end of it too. Like at least that's engaging the player on a see, daily basis. That kind of thing. See. see 
for me, right, okay, if they made the game mode, like, I don't know, let's just say the sandbox one, because that's the one everyone's asking for, right? If that, if the game is good, and this is true of, like, pretty much every other game ever, if the game is good, you don't need rewards, because the reward is playing a fun game. Oh, that's true. <laughs> You're dead on with that. I'd completely yeah? agree. So it's like, um, if they made this awesome thing... I don't care that there's no rewards because I'll just be enjoying myself playing it. If they make something that's awful, you literally have to incentivize me to yeah. play it. So I think to sum it up, like really the main thing is make it hit the points that you got or that they said that they were going to hit with this puzzle type kind of factor. Like I, I like figuring out some of the stuff. Like for example, like I'm going through or have gone through and done some guides for uh, you know, some of the events like the Darth Revan event and all that sort of stuff. Like, I didn't watch any videos before I played those events because I wanted to figure them out and have fun as part of that process. Yeah. So if they kind of brought some of that kind of stuff in where it was more, you know, of that figuring out kind of deal, um, I think it could be be a lot more fun and engaging on a consistent basis. So, um, but that is our time for Thank today, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the conversation. We will uh, hop over to Rage Channel. We've got a couple of topics to uh, discuss over there, so be sure to uh, hop over and take a check or take a look at part two of Rebel Informer, and we'll leave some links down below. And we will see you guys in the next video.